All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So, um, on Friday, we started with these. We did one, two, we did uh, examples one through five. Um, so, just to kind of review the process that we're doing from Friday. So, what we did was for like example number one, we're finding derivatives, right? So, we still use the same rules. We're still using power rule, product rule, quotient rule, sum difference rule, chain rule, all the same rules, nothing new. What's the new twist though? What's the new kind of wrinkle that we, we've seen that we haven't seen before? What, yeah, what's true with the Ys, Peyton? What's different about them? You're right. Anytime we're finding derivatives of Ys, we got to give a tag with it, right? This dy dx tag. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anytime <clears throat> we're finding derivatives in something of a y basis, something y related, anything other than x, it has to have a dy dx tag. Okay. So we find the derivative that way, and then we just get the dy dx by itself. Get the dy dx by itself. Okay. So our first step is really the calculus part. And then after that, we have to isolate the variable. Okay, that's that's the difference today, or that we've been doing. Okay, because these are implicit, right? Implicit. Implicit means x's and y's are stuck together, right? For lack of a better definition. X's and y's can't be separated, right? right? We can't separate, you know, I can't solve for y here. All right, but over here I can, right? These are just the old regular time of equations we've been looking at for a while, right? So, so that's how they're different. So anytime we have that, we have to use diff implicit differentiation, okay? So let's look at number six, where we left off, number six, okay? So again, we're gonna use the same rules we've been using since we started doing derivatives okay we're going to use the same rules no there are no added rules there are no special rules for this guy we're finding derivative of x and y okay so looking at this guy looking at this one here what rules do we already kind of see that we're gonna to have to be using which rules do we see as well chain rule yeah which part of it gives you the chain rule which part the square root, yeah. The square root of anything when we're finding derivatives is going to be a chain rule, okay? And then other than that, it just looks like just regular power rule. Nothing special besides that, okay? So first thing I got to do is always write it the root as a power, okay? So the root x plus 2y to the one half power equals 5y okay so i haven't I, I that's just rewriting it I haven't done anything yet right okay so now over here i see i have a this is the outside part here of my chain rule so i have to find the derivative of that so one half to the inside, or to the front, everything else stays the same. I subtract one whole power from there. Okay. Now I can find the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is the derivative of X. So the derivative of the inside here, derivative of X is just one, one plus. The derivative of 2y is just 2, but it's got to have a tag with it since it's the derivative of y, dy dx, equals. And then I have to find the derivative of the outside. This is the derivative of 5y. It's just 5 with a tag because it's the derivative of y. 
Okay. Calculus is done. Okay, we found derivative. Now it's all about isolating. Let me see here. This and this. All right. Well, this guy over here is almost isolated. All I would have to do is divide by five and I would isolate it. But we have one on the other side too. So I gotta I gotta get those guys isolated. Okay. Uh, let's see. I can change the root back, but I'm trying to see if that's really necessary. Okay, so what I see, this is what I see. It's all multiplication over here, right? Multiplication, I have one half times derivative of that times derivative of this. Or, sorry, I have one half times this part times this part here. Okay. Well, I see I have one over here too. I see I have a dy dx over here too. All right. And if I divide by five, that's not going to do anything because I still have this dy dx here. Okay. So what would I do? What would, what would, there's a, there's different ways to do this. So there's not just one way to do it. There's not one way to do this, but what's one way that I could get dy dx by itself. One thing I could try. Hmm? That's 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 what I was thinking. Try that. Will it work? I don't know, but it's dy dx. So let's try it. So divide both sides by the part that has the dy dx. So that way, at least, we get the dy dx's on the same side. They're not where we'd like them, but at least they're on the same side. So divide 1 plus 2 dy dx. Okay. So this and this divide by each other. They make 1s. So now I have one half times then I have five dy dx over one plus two dy dx. So can I cancel out, I know some of you guys, I can already see this happening on a test or a quiz, do this. Can I do that? I see a couple head nods, but I don't see the rest of you. Can I do that? Thank you. Can I do that? No, I cannot do that. Why can I not do that one step right there? It's dy dx divided by dy dx. Isn't it the same thing? Anything divided by itself makes one, right? What's preventing me from doing that mathematically? What's preventing it from being mathematically correct? Yep, yeah, the plus sign. Mm -hmm. If this wasn't here, if this part wasn't here, go for it. Absolutely. That would work. That would be mathematically correct. But the plus sign here is what's making that not available to us. Could I do this? I haven't seen this in this class too much, but I see it in Math 3 a lot. Can I do this? Add 3 to get, get 3 dy dx. No, because they're not like terms, right? If this guy had a dy dx, go for it. <clears throat> but they're not like terms, so I can't do that. Okay. <clears throat> so what do I do then? Yeah. 
Here's the big part. <clears throat> Here's the big. Got my dy dx's on the same side. Check. <clears throat> but one's in the denominator, one's in the numerator. I want them both in the denominator. So what do I do? Yes, sir. Anything, yeah, we can use anything we want. Anything, anything that's mathematically correct is on the table. So use conjugates, explain, explain what that means. And then I would have to do the same to the other side. Actually, no, I don't because it's just multiplying times one. So I don't have to do the same to the other side. Um, so multiplying by conjugates, that would, it would get rid of, so when you multiply by conjugates, it's, it's, it's a difference of squares here. So you would get one squared minus two dy dx squared. So yeah, I mean, I liked the thinking, but yeah, that wouldn't, that, that, yeah, we don't want more dy dx's. I want to, I want to get them, but th I like the thinking though. Um, thank you for. For, um, for that. Anyone else see anything? Go back there. <clears throat> oh so doing it in like an exponent so so it'd be multiplication i could do that it, it's not wrong to do that but then you'd have dy dx to the negative one and i'm trying to i i, I just want to what I would like to get is dy dx on the same level. So both of them numerators without multiply, like without multiplying them. Because if I multiply them, like originally, originally what I was thinking was keep change flip. Keep the top, change the multiplication and flip this, right? But then I don't think that would work. Mm -hmm. Zoom out. Oh, zoom out. Yep, go for it. I mean, can we just simplify the left side and then do the top dog, top dog, top dog thing? Oh, so cross multiplication? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, look, yeah, I haven't even looked at the left side. Let's kind of simplify that so that we don't have a negative exponent. Uh, let's see, one half. So I have one half. And then this part's going to go on the bottom, x plus 2y. It's got a negative 1, or sorry, negative 1 half, so it's going to still be in a square root. This part stays the same. Oops. Let me move this down a little bit. So what Sebastian said was, which will get rid of the fractions. This will get rid of the fractions, was cross multiply. Anytime you have a proportion equal to a proportion, fraction equal to a fraction, you can do what's called cross multiplication. Cross multiplication means multiply these two guys, then multiply these two guys, and set them equal to each other. So let's see. Over here, I'd have one plus two dy over dx uh, because it's just times one. Over here, I would have two square root two, two square root of x plus two y times five dy over dx. No more fraction. Right? They're on separate sides, though. So 
So what else can we do? Roman? So add to this side? Oh, subtract it over here. Let's try that. Minus 2 dy dx. Minus 2 dy dx. So we get 1 equals, and then I have... Um, Actually, you know what? I can multiply these two guys here because a two is a coefficient and a five is a coefficient. So I can multiply and make 10. So let's do that. So I don't have to have parentheses anymore. 10 square root X plus two Y with the DY DX tag minus two DY DX. I think that's going to do it. So now I got dy dx on the same side, which I wanted. Both of them are in the numerator. Both of them, there's no denominator. So what's going to be my next step? Easy stuff next. What's the next step? Yep, factor out what I want, dy dx, since both of them. Since there's two terms here, there's this term. And there's this term, and they both have a dy dx. So I can factor out a dy dx. And that's going to leave 10 square root x plus 2y minus 2. And this equals 1 over here. Divide by the stuff I don't want. Ten times the square root of x plus two y minus two. So we get dy dx equals one over ten. Minus two. Okay. <clears throat> that one had a lot more steps than the other ones. That's more of a level three problem, more of a level three. So the AP test is broken up into three sections of questions. All of the questions fit into one of three categories. What they consider easy, what they consider medium or moderate, and what they consider difficult or hard. Okay. So about 80% of the test, 70 to 80% of the test is a medium question, more like a level two. The rest of it is broken up into easy and hard. This would be a level three question, difficult, okay? The rest of them, this right here, like question number one, question number one and two, that's more of a level one type question, level one type question where we didn't have any of those weird cases, right? Weird cases being more difficult, right? It was pretty straightforward. Find the derivative, get dy dx by itself, divide by what you don't need, okay? Same thing with number two. Number two is more of a easy to medium question. <clears throat> you had three terms that had dy dx's, but still it was the same type of question, right? Here's the thing, you don't judge a medium or easy question by the amount of work. It could be this amount of work and it's an easy question. How they determine it is how much do you have to use your brain, All right? The question we just did, you really had to use your brain to figure out, we had to really sit there and think, okay, what's my next step? What's my next step? What's my next step? Okay, that's a difficult question.
I've seen some difficult questions that don't have any work. There's no work to be shown, but you got to do a lot of thinking. You have to know some stuff. You have to know what you're looking for. So the amount of work shown doesn't necessarily mean it's a hard question. It just means there's a lot of work to be shown, right? I can show you some math one questions that need this much work. And you guys would say that's easy, but you have to show that much work to get to the answer, right? So the amount of work doesn't necessarily have to do with how hard the question is. But like I said, this is more of a level three question. So like I said, if you do see these, it won't be that many on your tests, on the test that you guys just took. It's the same thing. I usually give one easy question, one what they consider easy, one what they consider hard and one and the rest are medium, medium questions. OK, and then the FRQs are medium. I haven't seen any to the many that are hard fit into what they consider hard. OK, so it means. It's pretty straightforward, but there might be a hiccup or two that you need to really think. OK, like this question here, when we got down to here. How do we get dy dx to get the same? How do we get them together? We had to kind of think about it for a second, right? Cross multiply. Sebastian said, try cross multiplication. That worked. Roman said, hey, subtract 2y, two 2y, two subtract 2 dy dx from both sides. Boom. We were there, right? But we had to sit there and think about it for a little bit. That's a level three type question. Okay. So, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot of work. It just means you have to think about it. Okay. You have to really, kind of, it's critical thinking. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what I want to do now is, um, the rest of the time I'm gonna give you to start on your assignment, okay? I chose a couple level one questions, a couple level two questions, and I think there's one level three question in your assignment, okay? So uh, the, desk number, the desk number you have, match that with the Chromebook. So go get that number Chromebook and we will get started, okay?